All right, I think we're we're good. I'm going to do a, a quick demonstration of how to use some of the uh, color uh, colorization functionality here within uh, Jamers. Um, so we're starting right now. We're just kind of looking at Olympus Mons with one of our default data sets, uh, which is some uh, Themis data that's colorized with mullet elevation. Um, but let's say you were using a numeric data set. Um, so instead of uh, colorized elevation, I'm going to look here for uh, numeric. Um, 128 PBD, which is one of the, the global maps. Um, and so now we've got the same kind of data here. Um, we're still looking at Olympus Mons. Everything's um, grayscale data. Uh, as I move my mouse around, you can see that we're seeing the actual elevation. So it's 20 kilometers uh, at the top of Olympus Mons and uh, a little below the uh, Mars median, um, just off to the, to the west here a little bit. Um, but we've lost all that nice color um, data. So if we want to actually come in and apply some color to this numeric data set here, uh, what we can do is, is I just uh, double clicked on the, the layer uh, to bring open the, the focus panel. And now I've got my elevation options. And this shows me that in the area that I'm looking at, here's the, the minimum and the maximum um, values that are, are in the screen. Uh, and on this little plus here, um, I can say, I want to add a stage and there's a few different options um that uh hopefully you guys can see this this little window um so one of them is color stretcher and there's some other things that can be done but i'm going to focus on the color stretcher today um and that brings me up this this color bar and so nothing has changed so far and because we're basically by default we're, we're stretching from black to white and that's just kind of what happens with this grayscale stage up here um but it also says you know here's the minimum value on this uh this and here's the the maximum value. So black is negative 5352 and white is 21185. So let's say that for whatever reason, I don't want to go from black to white. I want to go from uh, some other co some color to uh, a different color. So I can just actually right click on this tab and change the color of the tab instead of black. I'm going to pick this one. And on the other side, I'm going to pick um, you know, still at white right now. I'm going to pick this guy. And so now we're going to go um, from you know, blue to, to red or something. And uh, it's going to interpolate all the values in between. And we get this, this uh, kind of map in here. Um, so that's a very straightforward way to, to change things. We've kind of got some, some obvious uh, differences in elevation we can see there. Um, but I could come in the middle here and say, what well, I don't really want to go from, from blue to red. I want to go, I want to insert a tab. And in the middle, I want to have this intermediate value. And now you can start seeing, uh, now it interpolates from uh, here to here. And then it turns around and interpolates from here to here. Uh, and in the process of doing this, we also got some interesting detail we can see in the colors uh, here at this range, because there's a lot of variation in here. Um, that's a little bit more um, subtle compared to the, the giant elevation shift between the bottom and the top of Olympus Mons. Um, and so you could continue to do that if you wanted, and you could put another tab in here and say, you know, whether it makes sense to go between any of these, these colors to any of the other colors or not, um, you can add these ranges in here. And if you came in and started dragging these guys around, you can see on the little value underneath my mouse here, that's the value that this tag is gonna be at. Um, and this is, it requires that you have an actual um, value in the data set that corresponds to that. So you, you won't have like exact figures for this interface, but you can figure out like, here's where I want it to change and make some subtle adjustments if you really want um, to adjust how much space you're allocating to each color. Now, if you don't want to come in and, and do um, that kind of detail, uh, you can right click on here and there's a bunch of built in colors. You can come in and just apply and it'll apply a whole ranges of colors to um, these sort of things. So like I can just pick RGB and it's gonna put um, four you know, color tabs in there by default and give me some, some good uh, color range. If I come in and say, uh, pick a different one, uh, say full spectrum, um, it goes across you know, the whole range of the colors. I can do the inverse there. Um, and there's some of these that um, actually have, uh, a tab for every single spot in here. 
So it's not actually interpolating in between any of these. It's actually saying for this value, you're going to get this color. Um, and there's this basically has 256 uh, different options inside of it, um, which is the same thing for grayscale. Um, so you can have 256 different colors that show up in your map. Um, if you really want to get uh, interesting, uh, you can also load your own colors in from a file. And these files are, are very simple. Um, they basically um, have a map that says, uh, they're basically CMAP files. Um, and they have just a mapping between, here's a value, here's a, a color. And you can specify your own and then use those in there. Um, I'm going to go back real quick to just a much more simple um, set of colors here. I'm going to go back to the, we'll go to RGB here. Um, and so what you can see, this is kind of where I started from. We're setting a color here and a color here, a color here and a color here, and it's interpolating between all of these. Um, and that can be useful if you really want to see, um, you know, differences in, in values. But if, for example, you want to say, uh, let me just see where we hit certain thresholds. I don't, I don't care about the differences in here. I just want to know if we're in this range or this range or this range. Uh, then you can use interpolation here. And instead of uh, doing linear interpolation um, or some of these other options, which are just how you get between the different colors, you can go with the, some of these different hue paths or things. Um, but instead of that, I can say, let's stair step uh, and let's not do interpolation at all. And so if I click on this, uh, all of a sudden now, everything between these two tabs is this first color, this red, everything between this tab is green, and then everything between these tabs is blue. And so we can see our entire range of the map now is only one of those three colors. And so, for example, if you were just frontally trying to highlight elevations above a certain value, you know, you could adjust this, this slider here a little bit and you know, change, put that where you wanted, and then everything above 10,000 meters is going to be blue. And everything, you know, down to we can try and find uh, the mean value in here someplace and do something. And everything, you know, about that point is going to be green, and everything below that is going to be red. And you could imagine maybe you could do this if uh, you were trying to land something on Mars and you said, hey, if the elevation is below a certain level, we can't do anything. And if it's a you know, in a green area, maybe that's great. And then blue is too high. And you could set your uh, values in there to get a real quick, um, you know, yes, no, maybe uh, kind of answer. Or, um, you know, you can do this with any kind of numeric data set. So you could bring in slope maps, you could bring in um, temperature maps, you could bring in whatever else and do the same kind of binning of colors instead of uh, doing it um, with the complete interpolation. Um, and so that's kind of just a quick uh, demonstration of some of the functionalities of that color stretcher. Uh, the same color stretcher can be used in the stamp layer. It can be used in a couple other areas throughout JMARS. Um, but that with that same set of uh, adjusting tabs, adding colors, and picking interpolation. And so there's a lot of uh, functionality that's available in there. Uh, hopefully that uh, is a useful uh, quick overview. Uh, anybody have any questions? And if not, I think we can just uh, end the video.